It's a rematch with Biden, and we can now make some important uh, projections. Uh, CNN is uh, projecting now uh, that Donald Trump will win the Michigan Republican presidential primary. This will be his fifth straight major victory of the primary season and another loss for Nikki Haley as she persists in her fight against Trump despite his growing advantage in the all-important hunt for delegates, which is, of course, what is needed to win the GOP presidential nomination. Again, CNN projecting Donald Trump will win the Republican primary in Michigan, teeing up a blockbuster Super Tuesday contest next week. CNN. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Right after polls closed, Trump the projected winner. Now, we've got to talk about this a little bit because, once again, obviously things aren't going well for Nikki Haley, which we already knew. But once again, also, leftist media is pushing um, a false narrative once again. And we're here to address it today. Like, share, comment, and hit that subscribe button if you are new. And let's dive into Nikki Haley's troubles first before we get into the leftist media's terrible narrative. Let's dive in. It is going to be 9 o'clock on the East Coast. And when that happens in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, the polls will have closed as they have right now across the entire state of Michigan. At this time, NBC News projects that Donald Trump will win the Michigan Republican primary. That is our election projection. Donald Trump, the projected winner of the Michigan primary. NBC News can also now project that President Joe Biden will win the Michigan Democratic primary. Again. Joe Biden, projected winner of the Michigan Democratic primary. Let's head over to Steve Kornacki, who is where he always is, his post at the big board. Steve, what are the latest numbers here? Yeah, well, you can see if you've been following for the last hour, the story has been as the really the difference between the polls being open and closed in Michigan is Gogibic, Iron, Dickinson, Mononymy together a combined 0.5% of the statewide vote. So everything else has been closed for an hour. But now that the Wisconsin border counties are closed, we can make that projection. But it's been evident to you if you've been watching it for the last hour, what's been happening here. And one of the things is as more and more, more vote has been coming in, it was initially very concentrated right here in southeastern Michigan, but more votes from the rural areas up north are starting to come in. Some of the UP is starting to come in, and that Haley number has continued to tick down and down ever so slightly. Now she's just over 30 percent at 31 percent. Now Trump a better than two to one lead over Nikki Haley. And we mentioned, if you were watching just a few minutes ago, in southeastern Michigan, the two counties where Haley we think is going to do best tonight and where if she wanted to have a strong showing statewide, it really needed to show was bit one, the main major suburban uh, county of Oakland County. More than half the vote is in there. She's barely above 30 percent. This is a county, frankly, for Haley to be making a, a statement in Michigan, she would need to be winning. And, and what should be her best county in the state, quite possibly, would be Washtenaw County, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University. And even there, now 70 percent of the vote is in, and she's losing by almost 12 points to Donald Trump. So everywhere else around there, and certainly in the rest of the state, gets worse and worse for Haley. And it raises the question of whether she's even going to be able to finish, I think, above that 30 percent number. Remembering, she got 43 in New Hampshire. She got uh, uh, 40 in South Carolina. What could still uh, 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 buttress Haley's support would be, we've mentioned this, this corner of western Michigan around Kent County, where Grand Rapids is, around Ottawa County. This is where Holland, Michigan is. And you see we have a little bit of vote in. It's almost nothing, but I can show. Now, I'm sure a lot of you remember I said this. Now, of course, I didn't know this with 100 percent certainty, but I could guess. Right. I could make an educated guess that Nikki Haley had reached her peak. Right. She was already past the point of diminishing returns. OK. And so you heard it there. Forty three. Forty. Where do you think um, she landed this time around? Take a guess. Comment below. But let's continue you from Ottawa County. We do have about 1% in, and that initial 1%, if it's a harbinger of anything, would be terrible for Haley because this should be, outside of those two counties I just showed you, 
her best area in the state. There's a five-county region here that's about 17% uh, of the statewide Republican primary vote total. And this five-county region, Donald Trump didn't win a single one of them in the 2016 Republican primary in Michigan. In fact, in two of them, including the one we've just highlighted here, he finished in third place in 2016. This is as he was winning the state by a double-digit margin. So, again, if Haley wants to get that statewide number up or wants to at least stabilize it where it is, I think this area is really going to have to come in for her. One other sort of big, outstanding, uh, uh, slice of vote in southeastern Michigan. We're still waiting on Livingston County. Nothing there. But, again, especially once you get north here, basically we could say Saginaw. It's a bit arbitrary. But once you get north of there, it's basically Trump country in small rural counties with large uh, populations of non-college white voters, the core Trump base. You can just see what's happening here as they start to report in. You're going to see margins like that. Cumulatively, they're going to add up and they're going to buttress that Trump number statewide. Now, taking a look here at the Democratic side overall, now 10 percent of the vote and uncommitted over, for at least for the moment, that 15 percent mark, 15 percent statewide, 15 percent in congressional districts in Michigan is the threshold on the Democratic side to begin collecting delegates to the Democratic National Convention. Now, with a margin like this, Biden is going to take the lion's share of the delegates here. But the possibility that uncommitted gets delegates is certainly alive in the, in the early returns here. But basically, the uncommitted story on the Democratic side that we're following for the rest of the night is going to be concentrated in a few places. The first is right here in Wayne County. This is the biggest of the big. This is Detroit uh, here. But it's also home of Dearborn. And you had the mayor on from Dearborn uh, a few minutes ago. Dearborn with a majority Arab American population. So we have obviously 85 votes only from Wayne tonight. There's going to be far, far more coming in. But that's going to tell a big part of the story here uh, of whether uncommitted is registering with that large Arab American and Muslim American population is uncommitted, racking up big numbers when substantial votes start to come in. And then the other type of uh, uh, vote. And we're going to talk about that as well. Because, you know, once again, the leftist media is pushing a false narrative. But back to Nikki Haley. <laughs> I want to show you guys um, her final results. We're going to come back to these results later in the video uh, for good reason. So there you have the final result. Well, not the very final. We're, we're at 99%. Nikki Haley is at 26% and a half percent remember point of diminishing returns 43 40 or 39 39 in her home, her own home state kind of interesting how that worked right now at 26 where do you think that's going to go from here down even further now there will become a point where like it stops dropping you know, I don't know where that number exactly would be, you know, if, if she stayed in to the very end, right? There would become a point where it just kind of flatlined, right? But that flatline is going to be so low. That, you know, it, it, it's it's worthless. It's pointless. Um, I, I, I really want to hear what she has to say about this one. I really want to hear how, what she has to say about this because that's a, that's a crushing loss right there. 68% to 26%. 68 to 26. Yeah. That's a crushing loss. Now, I'm sure she hasn't, or at least I haven't seen any statements yet. I'm sure she hasn't made any public statements because, uh, you know, her and the elites that I feel are personally backing her. I don't have any evidence, right? Uh, you know, I don't want to get hit with no misinformation, right? But, um, and I've, I've made that clear. I, I think Nikki Haley's being propped up by some elites that are Democrats. Um, prefer people that really, really hate Trump, obviously. Um, now, I think she's getting some messaging put together by them and their team in order to spin this in some kind of way, right? Uh, trying to give her the right words to say, the right speech to make after such a crushing loss after uh, losing uh, by uh, 20 points in her own home state, now she's getting crushed in Michigan, you know? So so if she's going to stay in this race, the next time she comes out and makes a public statement, it's got to be on point, right? So I think that's what's going on right now. She's she's getting the messaging correct. I right, listen, I, I haven't been paying attention to politics for very long, but 
you know, it, it it starts to become pretty easy to predict what's going on and what's happening after a little while, you know. But let's continue on. Fox News contributor Newt Gingrich. All right, let's let's look first at the Republican primary. One has to ask, especially after Saturday night and tonight, uh, why is Nikki Haley hanging around in this race? Uh, I think at some point there will be a lot of resentment among Republicans that she is literally Literally forcing Donald Trump, who will be the nominee, into spending money he otherwise could be using in a general election campaign. Your reaction? Well, first of all, I don't think she's going to force President Trump to spend anything because he's going to beat her in every single primary in the country. That's just going to happen. Uh, second, the longer she stays in, the more she will alienate Republicans. This theory that she's hanging around in case something happens to Trump so she can then be the choice. No MAGA Republican, no Trump delegate is ever going to pick Nikki Haley. They will pick any of a dozen or 50 uh, Republicans who are acceptable, but they aren't going to pick her. And Facts. you saw that. Facts. That, that is so true. But hey, I, I want him to say this next part, too. In Nevada, where she lost by two acceptable, but they aren't going to pick her. And you saw that in Nevada, where she lost by two to one by none of these candidates. I mean, when none of these candidates beat you by two to one, there's a, there's a hint uh, that maybe you're in the wrong game this year. I hope she'll drop out. I hope she'll become part of the effort to beat Joe Biden. I do not think it's helpful to have her out there saying nasty things about the Republican nominee. And as far as I'm concerned, Donald Trump tonight is the Republican nominee. This is over. And the issue is to focus on the general election and why Trump would be a dramatically better president in 2025 than Joe Biden. Now, I haven't always agreed with um, Mr. Newt. All right. Uh, and I, I, I've, I've made, you know, that public before. Right. I, I'm not afraid of, you know, um, airing my disagreements uh, with with anyone on any topic. Right. But he is correct there. He is correct there. Nikki Haley, no matter what, will not be picked at all. And as he stated there, we saw that in Nevada. She lost to none of these candidates. That was literally the option. The option was none of these candidates. That's what it said. People picked that over Nikki Haley at a two to one rate. She lost to that. Now, of course, her excuse was, oh, well, we skipped over Nevada. We didn't really care, blah, blah, blah. You can say that all you want to, Nikki Haley, but Trump wasn't even on the ticket and you still lost. You still lost. He wasn't even on the ticket, right? So, this narrative of, oh, well, she's staying in to, uh, you know, possibly take over if Trump, blah, blah, it's not happening. It's not happening. Okay? Not happening by a country mile. We've already seen it. We've, all, we've already watched that movie play out. It's not happening. Now, let's get to uh, this leftist media narrative uh, really quickly because... I guess this video hasn't gotten too long, but let's let's hop into this leftist media narrative. Here it is. Check it out. Trump got 60 percent in South Carolina and it was a romp and a blowout and is getting in the mid 60s here tonight. And it's a big win. Then Joe Biden getting 80 percent is a really big win, a really good night for Joe Biden. And, and I think that this idea that somehow this uncommitted movement would strike somehow alter the Democratic Party's trajectory, I think, hasn't happened tonight. I mean, remember that. You know, Barack Obama in just in 2012, when he was running for re-election, the uncommitted got 11 percent of the vote. Um, it's going to be probably 14, 15 tonight, really not a huge difference. And uh, Obama went on to win the general election against Michigan native Mitt Romney by nine points. And so I don't think things have really changed tonight in the Democratic Party. I don't think this was a good night for the uncommitted vote. It was a good night for Joe Biden. I will say that once again, and we don't have a lot of polling in Michigan, but the polls that were done in February had Trump above, you know, winning by 50 points or more. He's winning tonight by high 30s, low 40s. So once again, you know, based on public polling, Donald Trump is underperforming the public polls that are available to us as he's done in the three early states uh, earlier this this election cycle. When you well, first off, that's wrong. Uh, the polls basically 
called what was going to happen in South Carolina. Uh, when, when you added up the aggregate of them all, okay, uh, why is 100,000 trending? What in the world? Anyway, uh, I also want to play this right clip now. from CNN uh, with Lee Zeldin, who, um, if you guys remember Lee Zeldin, he was the guy that ran against Kathy Hochul in New York to be governor of New York, and he lost by single digits. It was high single digits, if I remember correctly. It was like nine points or something, eight or nine points. Um, but for New York, for a Republican not named Donald Trump uh, to lose by single digits, it's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive if you ask me. Uh, but here is Lee Zeldin on CNN. And watch what they do to him at the end of this clip. Check it out. You know, there, there's a big enthusiasm gap. If you, if you look right now, there's you know, 26, 27 percent of the vote in uh, between the, the Democratic turnout, the Republican turnout. Uh, the Republican turnout is right now far trouncing the, the Democratic turnout. Um, and that's the percentage of, of the total vote that we're waiting to come in. It'll be interesting to see what comes in from Wayne County. Yes, I get that. But President Trump's number at the moment is actually more than all of the Democratic Party primary voters together. So I, I would say that President Trump, when looking at the amount of people who are coming out to vote for him tonight, mm -hmm would be very encouraged by the amount of votes that Anderson he is getting compared so, to all look, the Democrats. Quick, we gotta go. okay. <laughs> we gotta go. <laughs> we gotta go. We gotta go. <laughs> and what Lee Zeldin was talking about there was the sheer numbers, right? And I'm going to bring this up for you guys here shortly. Um, where are we at? Here we go. So you can see here, right? This is with 1% left to report. This is 99% reporting. Trump has 755,000 votes. We'll say 756,000. 756,000 votes. Let's take a look at the Democrat Party. What do you see here for Joe Biden? Trump has 756. Joe Biden has 618. I mean, I'm no math whiz, but that's a blowout in terms of a 1v1. But let's 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 give Joe Joe Biden some backup. Let's give Joe Biden some backup. So let's add up Joe Biden, right? Uh the uncommitted, which is at 13%, 100,000. Marianne Williamson and Dean Phillips. Let's let's add up all three, all four of those, and compare that to Trump's seven fifty six. Now, I already have it added up. Wait, wait, hold on. I already have it added up, and that equals seven hundred and sixty one thousand nine hundred and thirty four votes. So we'll round that up to seven hundred and sixty two thousand. Right. That's all the Democrat votes totaled together. 762,000. Look where Trump is. 755. Trump almost single-handedly beat all of them added up together. He lost by 6,000 votes. To all of them. Right? To all of them, Trump lost by 6,000 votes. That's the narrative that <clears throat> they aren't talking about. I mean, if you want to go for the the one on one between him and Biden, he crushes Biden by over a hundred thousand, right? Crushes him, seven fifty five to what was that six eighteen? And then even when you add up everyone under the Democratic ticket, Trump loses by six thousand votes, six k. Right. We ha we haven't added in any of this for Trump. We haven't added in any of this for Trump. Nothing. Right. Um, so this this whole narrative, oh, Trump underperformed, blah, blah, blah. Like that. That's a load of crap. That is a load of crap. You heard at the very beginning, Trump actually lost counties in Michigan uh, in uh, 2016. He didn't lose any this time around. So again, tell me how he's underperforming. He smoked your guy by over 100,000 votes. 
and nearly smokes everybody on your ticket, <laughs> right? He's down by 6K. 6K. <laughs> but of course, you know, mainstream media is not going to talk about that side of things, right? Not going to talk about that. They're, they're, they're just going to talk about everything else except for that. Um, and Joe Biden's got some serious problems on his hands. As you guys heard there, um, especially in a place like Michigan that could flip, when you've got the uncommitted coming in at 13% in an election that Biden was already predicted to lose, that could spell some serious doom, right? Serious doom. But as always, um, y'all let me know what you thought about this one in the comment section below. Like, share, comment. Hit that subscribe button before you go. Final question. Do you think Nikki Haley will drop out now? Let me know. Peace and love. I'm out.